TikTok personality Dylan Mulvaney, who made a name for himself over 2022 by showcasing his Days of Girlhood series, where he chronicled his experience of choosing to transition from living as a man to presenting himself as a woman. This propelled him into the limelight in a big way, and he was even famously a spokesperson for Bud Light, Nike, showcasing their sports bras, native deodorant, even working with, though not officially sponsored by, Tampax, and more, including being named Woman of the Year. Well, as recently as last year, he has been an entirely different kind of spokesperson. As we will see today, and honestly, I'm not trying to gloat, but rather express my heartbreak as at watching this saga unfold. Recently, he's come under a lot of rejection, ridicule, and even attacks by people who either previously supported him or just want to take advantage of his public figure status to essentially make fun of him, none of which I condone. Sadly, I feel this only further bolsters my point that this is all around a community full of vulnerable individuals, um, and now more than ever, Christians should be seeking to love all people with the truth and love of Christ. If you're unaware of what some of these harsh criticisms look like, what some people are saying online, or what some of the things that are happening are, today we are going to be watching some shorts and reacting to them in real time. As always, I want to lead in love and do my best to understand my fellow man, and I'm inviting you to join me. So welcome to The Crossing with Tommy. Here we discuss where biblical and cultural thinking differ, and we apply the Bible to everyday life so that you can think biblically. Um, I will start my video actually by saying that some of my other content is being maybe suppressed. Uh, so I'm going to try to use alternative words or blank out obvious words in the hopes that this video itself doesn't get less movement. <laughs> Um, even though it bothers my innate desire to not yield and conform to bullies, um, but for the sake of the people that I love um, and the fact that I want to encourage Christians um, to return to a sense of compassion for, I will dance that jig. <laughs> Um, if you want to support me fully, please find me on the app that rhymes with crumble as I build that out. Okay, on to the video. I think it's apt actually to open from this quote from Voltaire. Although I don't actually love a lot of his writings, he did make some interesting observations about human behavior. Like this one famously that states, if you want to find out who's in charge, find out who you can't criticize. I will let you process that as you will. <laughs> and I would say this is less of a criticism and more of a realistic comment. I do recognize that a lot of Dylan's behavior has not been reprehensible or really defendable, if you will. It's not been for the betterment of women or even trans women in the space. But arguably, possibly just for his own position and fame and profit. <laughs> I do have another video that's coming out where I kind of talk about this in a much more human and real way. And again, I'm never here to attack anyone. I'm not for that. There's no benefit to that. I'm just here to have a real conversation and possibly, hopefully, a balanced conversation. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm very much so against ever attacking anyone. I'm not advocating for that. I don't support that. If you go off and do that and say that it's because, you know, I was watching Tommy's video and it inspired me to do this, I, I won't support you. <laughs> like, um, so I just want to completely detach myself from any actions of hate or anger because that is literally the exact opposite of what I'm trying to communicate in this video. Okay. Um, I don't think that means that we can't have open conversations though and honest discussions in a calm and reasonable way about whether or not someone is doing something that is essentially unethical. But one thing I love to notice is that people are made in the image of God and that means if you're doing something wrong, it doesn't sit right with your own mind. We don't have peace with ourselves and I think you'll kind of see that in this video that I'm about to show you. So when I watch this video, um, I see a lot of things I don't agree with, of course, but what I really see is a man struggling. A and I care a lot about that and it tugs on my heart string strings because 
even if he's ultimately struggling because he's pursuing sin and capitalizing on like other people's movements or like joining himself to something that he found like um financially advantageous you know whether or not he truly feels part of this movement and group there's no denying that at the very least whether he's fully in or not he has absolutely profited from this course of action and as we'll see in the rest of this video that's really not sitting with a lot of people very well um and i have thoughts and feelings about that but i think i'll talk about them later in the video when it feels more relevant so let's keep going it's always important to me when i'm sort of like making videos about other people that i let them speak for themselves and uh, so th I think what we're gonna do is before we get into some of the more critical videos, um, we're gonna start by hearing from Dylan himself on his 271st day of girlhood video. And I want you to, if you can, listen for kind of like the back and forth and the kind of internal struggle, the admissions of truth and the disconnect. Like you'll be able to hear it all, I think. And I'm sorry for giving you that bias before we watch the video, but I kind of just want you to like have your ears open. And again, um, this is a complete person that God made and loves. So don't come into this video or this moment with any hate in your heart. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get into it. Day 271 of being a girl, or I'll say woman for this one, because this video is for the women on Twitter who just really don't like me. Hello, ladies. We got a lot to cover, but let's first talk tampons. I haven't talked about tampons on here lately because I don't use them. I'm a woman who doesn't have a uterus. I know this. And science was my strongest subject in high school. I was also shockingly good at math, but I digress. I just sometimes carry one in case anybody needs it. And that seems to have just set the world on fire in some pretty nasty ways. Okay, so I don't normally do this, but because this video is a bit longer, I'm going to kind of like break it up and make comments along the way. Um, I just want to point out like um, that I understand women's frustration, right? When he, when he speaks in this way and kind of tries to say like, you have a problem with me and that's not okay. Um, and, and I think it's just, I don't think he's not aware. Uh, and I guess that's all I'm trying to say here. So let's continue and see what else he has to say. Again, sorry to interrupt. I know I don't normally do that, but let's go. And this is a conversation that's been going on for months. I just haven't chimed in because I'm so tired of sticking up for myself over something that was so pure intentioned. But now Twitter is just ablaze. And this week, there's some women that are now coming for Tampax and I wanted to clear the air. So I have some amazing news. Are you ready? I have never worked with Tampax before. The most that happened was they sent me a few boxes of tampons back in April, just in case I bumped into anyone, um, including yourselves, and I gave them all away. I've got a few left. And this one's really gonna blow your mind. I have never made one dollar off of them in hygiene products. So I hope that helps you sleep better at night knowing that. And no need to bring Tampax into this. I just wanna gently say that if Tampax aligned themselves with him and sent him boxes of tampons, then like they already like brought themselves into it, uh, whatever it is. Um, also, we're going to watch a video in a minute that kind of gives more context to what he's talking about, just in fairness for the whole conversation. Um, furthermore, on a personal note, um, I have to say that um, if the sweetest man ever approached me in the women's bathroom and offered me a tampon like I love people I love all people but that would weird me out and that's not a wrong thing it's not a wrong and weird thing to have that natural response there's a perfectly healthy normal innate response of the separation and the reality of like yes you just said it yourself like you you don't have a uterus this doesn't apply to you it's um, making me uncomfortable that you're trying to be aware of like my body and its processes and that shouldn't be um, a moment or tool to call anyone like hateful or weird or any other names and so um, I think the conversation should be more like 
I understand how some of you might not really like that, but for those of you who've been receptive, thank you, you know, and like let each person kind of exist in their own piece. Like, um, let me have my moment of, actually, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, it is no different really than me personally wanting to work with a female doctor. Like I should not be um, made to feel like that's a wrong thing to want to work with a woman about women's health. I mean, I know that's kind of like a deeper kind of relationship. So I completely understand that that wasn't a great example, but it's in the same ballpark. It's okay to say I'd rather be alone and slightly vulnerable um, and, and possibly, you know, in a restroom or any other kind of vulnerable situation like that with just a woman. Um, that's not weird. <laughs> so um, either you don't get that, which I don't believe, I think you do get that, or like you get that and you're trying to make others, specifically women, feel bad for wanting that kind of separation. And that's just not healthy, in my opinion. The first one is healthy, the wanting the delineation, that's healthy. So, but the bigger problem at hand is that you feel me carrying a tampon around is a threat to you and your womanhood. How is someone doing something nice so repulsive to you? Again, I don't think it's about being repulsive. I think it's about, oh, you came into my woman's space as a man. And that's weird to me. It, it makes me feel weird and that's okay. Um, and let's say that there was a woman who really, truly didn't want to feel weird about it like you using words like repulsive is actually not helping further anything just just for the sake of conversation it's really not so there's that because listen to this if a man whether he was your boyfriend or your husband could even be your gay best friend kept a tampon for you at his house just in case you needed it you'd gush over him you would run to brunch on sunday and tell all your gal pals that he's so thoughtful and he cares and he listens I think the difference there though, just like, I, I know, I'm sorry, I keep stopping, but for the sake of conversation, like the difference there is that is an invited relationship. That is an invited closeness, right? Like if someone is my best friend or someone is my boyfriend or someone is my husband, like I have asked that man to come into my sphere of closeness and my sphere of like my personal world. And like, I'm willing to share parts of my personal world with this person. It's totally okay to say like, but you're a stranger to me, so that's not a, a place you've been invited, right? I mean, that's just common sense, my opinion. And then a trans woman does it, and all of a sudden, I'm the reason that there's a tampon shortage. Okay, real talk, though. Again, I'm so sorry, but, like, even if another woman did this in the bathroom, like, just randomly was like, hey, hi, how's it going? Do you need a tampon? Like, I'd be like... That's a bit much. Why are we why are we having this conversation? You know, maybe that's just me. OK, getting a little personal here, but everyone is different and that's OK. And so this is like an incomplete conversation on so many levels. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. You know, it's it's not because I'm misogynistic. It's because you're transphobic. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that he thinks he gets to say that to people. Um, and there's an entire conversation about um, well, just the reality of the disconnect, um, of thinking like that women would be bothered that a man is coming into women's spaces and telling women how they're supposed to feel about it or how they're allowed to feel about it. Like that kind of falls under the category of misogynistic. Um, anyway, uh, and then just the name calling is really not okay. Like I'm, I have no fear for you. <laughs> like I'm not afraid of you. I'm actually more afraid for you. Um, and I don't mean that in a judgy way, although I'm sure a lot of people will take it as judgy, but that's on you. Sorry. So let's keep going. You know, we got to work through this and, and babe, caring for others, it's the bare minimum. You know, you might not like me, but I care about you. I care about your feelings. I care about your opinion of me, which I'm... I, I don't think that's accurate because if you cared about like our feelings and opinion, then we we could have an intelligent and calm response and say, no, thank you. Or I would not like that from you. And that doesn't make us that word that I can't say. <laughs> like it just makes us those who are communicating and having feelings and in process of feelings. I'm really trying to get over. And the last thing I will say, and this will probably make you feel really good, is that I'm jealous of you. 
you know, I wish I was born in your body. I wish I had a uterus. You know, my sex assigned at birth was a male. Okay, just like quick time out. Um, that actually doesn't make me more comfortable. Um, the hyper fixation on like what makes me a woman actually makes me very uncomfortable just in general. I don't know if that hasn't been said. I don't know if it's relevant. Frankly, I'm not expecting this video to go anywhere based on how my other videos are on the topics are doing. So for all 12 of you, thanks so much. I just want to communicate like it's okay to feel a little bit weirded out by like, wait, what did you just say? That's like the, the amount of time that I walk around the world hyper fixating on what goes on inside or outside of a man's body is literally zero amount of minutes or seconds with the exception of what I had to do to learn that in school and anything that pertains to anyone's actual health or health issues. But beyond that, like it's not a reoccurring topic that goes on in my brain. And so if someone were to say that to me or like openly say this as though it should be completely normal, like I have pause of like, that's not um, a typical, right? That's a medical term, typical. That's not a typical mental fixation. So that doesn't actually make me more comfortable. It makes me much less comfortable because now you're not just coming into the restroom to function in the restroom. You're coming into the restroom, like literally thinking about everything that makes me a woman while you share this space with me. And like, that doesn't make me more comfortable. It makes me less comfortable. And I think that's fair to say, even if you don't have ill intentions, like that very thought is inappropriate in my opinion. Um, so, and I, I think, I think, I think there's a lot of women that share this opinion. And I think that's why this, um, is a conversation, a big conversation. So, um, also just wanted to gently point out, you know, I appreciate his willingness to say here that he's biologically male. Um, you know, it just is what it is. Um, I had a lot of hate on Twitter the other day for calling, um, a man, but like he is, he even says he is. So there's that. Um, it wasn't a hateful. It was just like literally repeating what he says. So there's that. Does that make you feel better hearing me say that? It's just not what God had in mind. So here I am. You know, there's probably a lot of women that you don't like to group yourself with, but they're still women. And so am I. Yeah. Um, struggling a little bit with a couple of things real quick, not trying to be unkind, just trying to like bring things home, bring things into perspective as we take in what he has to say. Um, in the same like sentence almost, he says, you know, I am a man, but I am a woman. Um, obviously that doesn't actually make sense. So that's kind of part of the point of this conversation and we'll get into it more with a couple of, um, other videos. It doesn't like make room for us to be unkind or to be unloving or hateful in any way, shape or form, but it is part of the conversation because you have to see that that just doesn't make sense. And I will also take this quick moment to say that God does not make mistakes. God made us deliberately. Um, Psalm 139 says that he knit us together in our mother's wombs. He knew exactly how he made us. Um, and, um, you know, he did not put a female mind into a male body that doesn't exist. That's not accurate. There's no science to back that up. It's not true. Um, and it is damaging. It's a, it's a hard damaging kind of thing to suggest. Um, and it makes people feel like they're a mistake or like they're rejected by God or by people. And it's really damaging to continue to push that message because it's inaccurate in every possible way it could be. It's biblically inaccurate. It's scientifically inaccurate. Um, and so uh, I think that's where we see a lot of struggle here we see a lot of this like pausing and and struggle and like really trying to come to terms and come to grips with this whole topic and conversation because i think at his core i think he knows why people are upset why women are upset um and i think he knows that the whole instance of the days of girlhood like has been upsetting to people and that's not unfounded um, so there's more to this conversation, but I don't really think that it's valuable for the sake of this video, um, nor that it's even generally valuable for like the general message of my channel. But I just, I just want you to know, like, 
I know that there's more to this conversation, but the points of my video today is I want to speak about truth, but I also want to spur us towards compassion and not, you know, give us permission for what hateful actions or behaviors. It's, um, it's just not okay. So let's break down truth with compassion and love and move forward from that. And now it just, it feels like high school and it feels like you want me to experience the pain and trauma that you've had to endure as a girl. And the fact that here I am, you know, attempting to enjoy womanhood is incomprehensible to you. Um, I think I speak for most women when I say it's not incomprehensible, it's just disingenuous. And what I mean by that is you um, can't just say you want to be a thing and then you are that thing. Um, it's just common sense. Uh, so we're not the weird ones for saying like, but you can't have days of girlhood because you're not a girl. <laughs> Um, so there's that, but I know that's old news. So let's keep going. <laughs> you know, whether it's that I carry tampons or that I'm too feminine or I call myself a girl or that I'll never birth a child. Well, here's some more good news for you. I'm not enjoying my womanhood as much as I was and my pain might be different than your pain, but it's very real. So if that was your goal, then congrats, but I'm still a woman. And I'm so again, this is the human part I want you to pay attention to, right? He's saying, I'm not enjoying this as much as like I thought I was or I thought I would, right? And it's like, um, I care about that, you know? I care about how this must be impacting like this person's experience in life and also all of the literally millions of people that he impacts and influences. And I think that matters. Um, and so we'll get into that later in the video, but just wanted to point that out real quick. Um, like it's... Oh man. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to share a mom moment. It's like when your little kid runs up and kicks like their brother, right? And then the first kid, the one who kicked gets, you know, put in timeout or punished or whatever, because they're, you're trying to teach that kid, like it's wrong to hurt somebody else. And then the kid that's in timeout for doing the wrong thing is like, nobody likes me and everybody's mad at me and everybody hates me or whatever, right? And it's like, well, no, it's not that. It's just that you did something wrong and we're trying to show you like that's not acceptable behavior. So like you can't sit there and make yourself a victim when you're actually the one who's doing something that's wrong. And then those that are telling you it's wrong are doing it because they don't want you to continue in that. I know it's different because like I'm not trying to have authority over anybody um you know where I would as a parent over a child so kind of again not a full example but I think you understand the heart of what I'm saying hopefully <laughs> maybe you guys can leave a better example in the comments um hopefully you, you do it in love though that'd be great I'm tired and we don't have to be bffs and you don't have to follow me just please don't call the police on me if we bump into each other in the bathroom you know, my only agenda is to try to find the will to wake up every day and find some ounce of happiness. Okay, like that's what I'm talking about. That breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to hear him say that. Like, I understand that that could just be your experience in every day anyways, no matter like any of these other kind of details or variables or factors, but like struggling to survive but making yourself be in this position where like that is like you're creating the environment in which it is a struggle in which you are trying to exist it breaks my heart it shouldn't be and like i'll get into it more in the video but this is this is where christians need to be stronger in responding in love and compassion and friendship um not hate because it, it's um because it's not productive to respond in hate, is my point. Um, and it's just not going to further the conversation, so. And believe it or not, somehow I love you. And P.S. I am also very nervous for you just because hopefully soon trans won't be as tolerated online, but your tweets are forever and I don't want those to come back and haunt you. Yeah, so I think it's really like worthwhile to say that, of course, um, if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you know that I actually see
is a really sweet guy um, who like has a big heart and really wants to love and all of those good things. So sometimes the things that he says I think are are genuine and, and really from a place of love. And then sometimes some of those things have like a hint or a tone or an undertone of um, like a veiled threat. I know that sounds really mean, but come on, isn't that kind of what he was just saying there? Like, oh, hey, your tweets live forever, so watch what you say, just in case, like, what? It becomes illegal to speak the truth? Um, it seemed a, it seemed a little bit, like, ominous. I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to put in a clip of this right now. I'm not going to watch and react to it right now, but um, there was this video, uh, 30... Um, 31st day of girlhood or whatever from 2022 and in it there was this skit this moment where Dan is like pretending to be concerned that he hasn't yet had his period <laughs> and um it really felt like a direct mockery um like there wasn't actually like a funniness to it like it just didn't land well and I get it the struggles of being a content creator and having a good hook and making good content and blah 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 but it was just in poor taste and like this is a lot of where this idea stems from of like okay you're just you're just making money on making a mockery of what it is to be a woman day 31 of being a girl and I'm freaking out a little bit I haven't gotten my period yet okay I'm late and I mean, I haven't kissed anyone in a while, but still, like, we know what happened to the Virgin Mary, okay? It's possible. In all seriousness, no, I can't get a period. But my doctor did tell me that the estrogen I'm taking can cause me to become, like, kind of hormonal, emotional, like, three to four days out of the month. So watch out. Um, and this is going to sound shocking, but I wish I could get a period. I wish I had those parts just because I would love to be a mom one day, but I'll just figure out a different way to do that. And that's going to be okay. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. And to any woman that doesn't have a period, I'm, I'm with you. To any human that does have a period, I'm sending you love and relief. And I have tampons and, and I bought pads and I almost bought diva cups, but that's where I drew the line. Okay. I love you. Bye. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day. Um, so that's kind of some context there. Um, and I've kind of made some of the other points that I was going to talk about. So I just wanted to highlight that um, really like some of the ways that Dan was talking, uh, just it really is something that's often thrown at biblical Christians, or in this case, more generally at women who are like not for this kind of behavior. Just this idea that we ourselves are suffering from some kind of hateful bias or that speaking the truth itself is unloving, that we are in the wrong. And, and I just want to encourage you, you don't have to receive that, okay? <laughs> Just because somebody who can speak well on a camera is looking right at you and saying all these things about how like you're the hateful one or you're the one in the wrong doesn't make it true or make it accurate. Um, in another video, which I won't link for reasons, <laughs> Um, but I encourage you to go find on your own. I discuss uh, that biblical love means fighting for someone else's righteous standing with God. Um, even noting that true love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rather delights in the truth. So by God's measure, please remember that you are in fact being the most loving by upholding foundations of truth, yet standing firm in love. Remember, if you're right, you're right, even if you're gentle in the way that you discuss it. So don't get upset and don't use someone else's bad behavior as an excuse for your own or for like going off online or something that's not productive and God does not condone it. Two wrongs do not make a right. In fact, it may give you peace to remember that um, really untruth and unbiblical values have been a constant since, well, really like the fall of man and I guess therefore the beginning of time in a sense. Um, and we even see uh, that Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5, but realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, which I think is kind of the heart of all of those things, right? When we love like worldly things before God, like that's the sin that God cares most about. 
um, and holding a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. So this, again, is Paul's like warning letter to someone. And he's saying like, hey, just be aware that if people are practicing these things, these are not the kinds of things that demonstrate a heart attitude that is turned towards caring about the things of God and honoring God with their life. So again, I just want to emphasize that no well-spoken person with a camera gets to talk to you and try to make you feel that upholding God's word um, or the intention of our design. And if not, like at least upholding immutable truths, like observable scientific facts, that that doesn't make you a bad or hateful person. And I would like to point out that capitalism doesn't make you an evil person either. In the next clips of videos, for the sake of time, sorry, <laughs> um, we're going to see that some people's responses to them like kind of waking up to or exploring the possibility and reality that Dan has been pursuing fame and money with his content for himself only, which again, I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. There's not anything inherently evil in it unless you're doing it at the expense of others or promising to fight for causes that affect your community and then essentially not doing that. money. I saw you buy some of those heart-shaped sunglasses that I love to wear. So obviously I influenced you to buy something, um, but you're doing all those things to mock me. Um, more specifically, you just kind of, I think, hate trans people, which you can make fun of my voice or my outfits or, you know, my personality as much as you want, but you don't get to mock my identity. Um, and I think you believe that I'm taking away from your womanhood when, babe, I am here to support you in any way I can. Um, which honestly is part of my conversation. Um, and there are other people who have feelings that Dan has been like exploiting issues that they care about too for his own personal gain and benefit. And, and they're, they're just not really like comfortable with it. Okay, so in the next few videos, I'm kind of just going to um, watch them, probably not react too much, but I just wanted to give you a scope of some of the things that people are saying that, you know, matter to them, if you will. So everyone is finally canceling. I have been trying to tell you guys about this person for the longest time, but whenever I say it, I get labeled as a certain word that I can't say on this app. Yeah, she's everyone being kind of aggressive. Massive Sorry. hypocrite now that I know. People are finding it very suspicious that this woman right here has grown her entire account based off of promoting women's rights, saying the significance of women, how important women are for her, and of course, recognizing the struggles that women have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. She's actually won, I swear, Woman of the Year for this. However, when it comes to speaking about the women in power, who are having to use tent scraps because their periods are coming or the women in Congo who are aggressively and systematically getting graped. She's quiet. She's silent. It's crickets even. People are recognizing that it's women that got this woman to this place to begin with. But however, when it comes to addressing issues that affect women within the diaspora, she's conveniently quiet. Yeah. So that, that was that was her take um, and kind of a point that she's making of just like, hey, you know, if you're really for women's rights, are you really standing up for women's rights? Um, and again, for the sake of this channel, I did edit out a couple of things that don't really align with the kind of content that I want to put out. Uh, I hope you'll understand. I'm just not a huge fan of like language and stuff. So there's that. Um, Okay, so this next video kind of speaks more to like the heart of, um, I don't know, just this moment of like realizing, oh, you're not, you don't really care about the things I thought you cared about. Um, and, and I don't know that it's entirely fair to put this on Dan, to be uh, just completely honest. Like, um, you know, I also am not speaking on these issues one way or the other, right? Um, I get that I'm not anyone um, as famous uh, or celebrity status like Dan, so I don't really care about that. But what I'm saying is there is this realization or this moment of like, you are not doing caring saying what I thought you would be. So there's that. Me has now come under fire by a lot of her fans over the last few days for her reluctance, I guess, to speak on the watermelon place. Her comments have been flooded with people begging her to speak on this, with people asking, much like it has been for any larger creator, larger celebrity. And a lot of people are saying that because she is a part of a marginalized group, this issue should speak more clearly to her and she should want to advocate for it. And on that first point, I'm very curious to know what you think. But I also think that she's adding to the trend of the of creators, specifically influencer celebrities, 
that explode and they grow because people follow them. They make money because people follow them and then they lose touch. That becomes so consistent that they lose touch with the idea that it is literal human beings sitting behind their phones, liking, sharing, commenting on their posts and taking action to support and elevate this person's narrative with, and they're not connected to those people anymore. Because if everybody stopped interacting with people's videos, nobody would be making any money off of them. And it gets really disheartening to fall in love with a person, right? Like you fall in love with a person and their journey and you follow them and you're following them through this journey and everybody begins as a normal person, you know, and then all of a sudden they are hanging out with Lady Gaga and Paris Hilton's mom and sitting down with the president of the United States. And then eventually what happens is they're not answering any of your comments anymore and they're not listening to what fans want. And I think this is a very common feeling for people. We as fans create the stardom, we create the wealth, we create the economy and benefit from it, not at all. So um, one thing I just want to comment on really quickly is um, no one owes us anything, like us fans or us interactors, like no one owes us anything. Um, I think that each person has autonomy and should be it should have the freedom to speak on what they want to speak or not speak on what they don't want to speak on. Maybe someone just doesn't know a lot about the conflict. Maybe it's best if like he just doesn't say anything if he's not informed. Like I think that's a very healthy approach to take. That's totally fine. So in a little bit of defense of Dan, um, there's that. However, I can also understand um, this woman's point here where she's kind of saying like, but really you have nothing to say, nothing at all. And that was kind of the point of the woman before for a little bit um so the the whole thing is just kind of interesting and it's like this well you're not doing what I want so I'm just going to drop you and turn on you and I don't think that's a healthy approach to anything um so again this is my like human perspective right on like this this man is coming under all of this like undue scrutiny um it's kind of just this idea of like uh you know the wolf won't attack you so long as you're feeding it, right? Um, so uh, I hope I never get to that point. Okay, so this next person um, I actually thought was Blair White. Um, of course, it is not Blair White. So sorry, Blair White, for thinking you were somebody else. But surely you can see some of the similarities. Okay, anyways, but um, they're kind of they kind of have this like idea. This this person and I guess some other people who are kind of following this trend where they are like ignoring certain celebrities who are choosing to not speak out um, on the conflict in the Middle East. And and I think that I don't really agree with that whole sort of thing. I think, again, people should have the freedom to speak or not speak, but this is this person's take. So let's let them speak a little. Someone I didn't even think of until someone just pointed it out in my comments that should be on this block list. I don't know why she didn't come to mind or how she has evaded anybody asking her to speak out, but she has. Because I haven't seen anybody ask her to speak out. And the thing about is that she did build her platform off of her journey being inclusive and fighting for the rights of the marginalized let's not forget that after she blew up she went to the white house i mean she interviewed joe biden so i don't want to hear anybody say oh D doesn't talk about politics D does talk about politics and i've been careful not to be too critical of D because i know that she already experiences so much hate from just existing as a but just because you are a marginalized identity does not mean that you are above accountability. So seven months in, she hasn't said anything. She should be on that block list too. She has millions and millions of followers of people who care about social justice work. And in my opinion, as a trans person, it is totally unacceptable for anybody of a marginalized identity to not be speaking up for the people of power. Okay, so again, this is this person's take. Um, I am personally not even aware of what Dylan and the president talked about when he visited the White House. Um, I don't know if it was about politics. Maybe I should have looked it up, but since this isn't the point of the video, I didn't. You can go look it up and let me know in the comments, um, and maybe I'll have more to say about it in a future video. But the point that I want to make here is like, this person is a person, not your like personal monkey that you get to tell what to do or how to dance. And so in defense of Dylan, like nobody gets to tell you what you have to align with um you are your own person and you're accountable to god and you need to decide what that looks like and what you align yourself with in your life um 
So that is some of my take. Okay, so in this, we can really see that there are people on uh, like this side of the conversation who are willing to just completely drop him because he's not performing the way that they want him to. He's not like living up to their thought or expectation. And I can only imagine that this is both financially frustrating for um, but also on a human level, probably making him feel very alienated and lonely. Um, and I, I'm honestly deeply concerned for him. I have a video coming out soon uh, where I discuss that I actually think that this community is very much so like the battered Jewish traveler in the story of the Good Samaritan. And he, he like, just for reference, you know, he was beat up by, by vandals um, and left completely unhelped by those who he really thought and expected would come alongside him, come to his aid. Um, and I know that these videos didn't really show like like being like actually attacked or like like full-on canceled or whatever but kind of but you have to see the similarities right i mean like doesn't that seem familiar doesn't it seem like those who should come around him and support him no matter what kind of aren't i want to say to you that you can't afford to allow hate to dictate how you talk to people or approach them by initially talking about our potentially what smug position on how they're going to be ultimately punished for their sinful actions i mean um, isn't that all of us without repenting and turning and following Jesus? Let me remind you of this. Heaven will be full of sinners, but there will be no unrepentant ones. Listen to that again. In all of our conversations, we need to keep the gospel at the heart of it. We need to be willing to reveal to people their sin, whatever it may be, whether it's lying or stealing or adultery or anything else, and use that as a tool to reveal their heart towards God. I mean, that's the point. That's the gospel, right? The gospel is that you have sinned against God and you need to be made right with him. And Jesus made a way for you to do that. The only way for you to do that. And, and we need to reveal that, you know, that person does in fact need the forgiveness available to them in Christ and encourage them to repent of all sin. But don't forget that you need to leave room for the Holy Spirit to reveal that sin in them and teach them over time. I think we get this really prideful idea that like, oh, we have to tell them every single sin that we see. No. Did that help you when you came to know the Lord? Because it certainly didn't help me. I needed to hear from God on my own. I needed to go to the scriptures and let the Holy Spirit teach me on my own. And I think that needs to be more of the part of our conversation. We need to be going for the gospel, not going for the, the political. Do you understand? Take the issue beyond political or cultural uh, that it has become and just keep it biblical. Keep it biblically based. <laughs> this is a person who is living out a worldview that doesn't align with God's word. And the point I'm trying to make in this video is that it just all makes me incredibly sad and that there's, there's kind of an implosion and a rejection happening. And this is just a famous example, you guys. What about the people who essentially suffer in silence and are even more vulnerable than this celebrity? Those who don't have the insulation of millions of dollars and famous people or famous friends to rest on. I mean, no, of course, money itself doesn't buy you happiness or security or, you know, peace, but it can certainly buy you time to be alone and heal and not have to go to work or go out in public or whatever. I mean, I think it's safe to say that someone like doesn't have the same kind of everyday life as someone else, right? So, okay, why am I talking about this? Have I seen these attitudes in the wild? Um... I would ask, have you not? <laughs> so let's jump over to this one example that actually really broke my heart. I think it was meant to be a joke, but I didn't think it was funny at all. It really bothered me to see it. Um, and it really bothered me that this even happened. I won't even give context. I just need you to come watch the video with me. Okay, this is too funny. There's a house race in North Dakota between two Republicans and one Republican used cameo to film an attack ad against the other Republican for being a rhino. Huh? It's brilliant. It's so good and it's hilarious. One. Your friend Rick told me that you have a huge job change coming up and from what I understand you just spent like 10 or more years in North Dakota like basically saving the planet and like promoting green energy and reducing harmful coal plants which is so iconic and now I'm very excited for this. You are now going to the DC Zoo to be working with rhinos. Babe, that is insane. I'm so ex like, how do you go from one thing to another? Those are pretty drastic. And if I'm ever in DC, I'm gonna figure out a way to reach out to you and um, check out the rhinos. So um, best of luck. I love you, Julie. Bye. Cut on these rhinos. Yeah.
basically my thoughts on that. <laughs> I mean, when it comes right down to it, like he's laughing at the misuse and the, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but the ignorance of um, about this issue or about this thing that he was hired to talk about or whatever. And, and he is just, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't think it's right. But aside from that, because um, I guess that's not the point of the video or the conversation either. The big idea here is like, I feel like laughing at someone's unawareness is a way of dehumanizing them. And I know that's like, oh, you're being so sensitive. And you know what? That's okay. I think it's okay to be a little bit sensitive sometimes, right? Because remember, I'm a mother and I'm teaching my children how to function in the world. And I don't want to teach them when you see something wrong in the world, go out and make a mockery of that person so that they can be embarrassed. And then maybe they can be better. Or maybe you don't care about that. Like this doesn't strike me as like, I'm invested in someone's righteousness. This just strikes me as like, haha, look, the person has dirt on their face. On the flip, side you know uh sorry not sorry but hey sweetie like you should have just done a couple google searches before getting into doing that video i'm sorry that that kind of like blew up in your face a little bit that's not cool but here we are uh another thing that i kind of want to talk about is um like another example that i can really realistically give is in my first ever unintentional viral tweet which was not actually what i wanted out of that moment i was talking about how it was really inappropriate for anyone to speak in a dehumanizing way about um, which is kind of funny because it was actually like sort of a response to this video, although I didn't like link the video or whatever. Um, but uh, anyways, I don't think it's okay for any of us to speak in a de dehumanizing way about Dylan or any of these other people in this community, whatever, even if we disagree, even if we don't like what they're doing, even if whatever, we don't understand, right? And the amount of snide comments that I got from those who claim to be Christian was really disheartening. And like, it's just, I just, I just kind of want to like shake people with love. Like, please stop. You're, you're making us look bad, you know, but like, I understand the frustration, right? That's kind of the point of this whole video. Like I, I'm trying to say that I slightly understand both sides, but it doesn't make it okay for any of us to speak with hatred towards one another. Um, and there were, there were literally instances of people asking me like, well, how are we, any of us speaking in a dehumanizing way? I'm like, did you see the video? Have you heard people like talk about and call him like an it or call him like, you know, you know, just calling these people names or saying like deranged or, you know, all of these other insinuations. And I, I get it. Right. But it's just, it's not helpful comments. It doesn't further the conversation. It doesn't further the gospel. It's just a person sitting there frustrated, saying frustrated and frustrating things. And it's not beneficial. And it's just really why I wanted to make this video, to be perfectly honest. Um, so don't hear me wrong. Like, as we've seen in, in some of today's videos, himself even said, you know, I have struggles and like, I know realities and, um, I know what's not reality and non-reality and everything is not happy and not everything is good. And yet the things that like, um, you know, he's advocating for or making a case for, like they don't really make sense. Right. Um, and so in real time, you can see a battle or like a willful ignoring of truths. And that's where a lot of my frustration comes from for sure. But we need to just like, call it what it is, right? We need to just call things what they are, not use this as an instance to somehow say that this person who is saying these things that you don't agree with or you don't like is less than human, right? In fact, I would make the case that he's fully human and fully displaying his sin nature. Uh, like what I mean by that is just, we can observe a willful disobedience to God. And I don't think you can get any more human than that, but I digress. <laughs> Okay, so I know that this is getting a bit long, but I hope it starts a conversation for us. I'm hoping it moves you to compassion, and I'm hoping that you check out my other content that I make around these topics to try to spur us all towards compassion and gospel-centered, you know, conversations. Um, I know that people can get feisty over certain hot-button topics, uh, but that's just not how God made us to be. Remember, we are called to be self-controlled as we ourselves walk in humility daily with the Holy Spirit, right? And as we walk with the Holy Spirit, we ought to then end up looking more like the Holy Spirit 
demonstrating that self-control, demonstrating that heart's desire for that person that we're talking to or even about to come to repentance and to come to a place of relationship with God. If you liked this video, please be on the lookout for my upcoming video doing a little bit more of a deeper talk about as a person, social media, and the phenomenon that it has been like as a whole, and also responding a bit to his video discussing his faith and considerations of his relationship with the Bible and his relationship with God. It gets a little weird, but I think it's worth talking about. Um, and if you found this content like uh, interesting or, or helpful, um, please take a moment to do all the things to like, like it and comment on it. Um, and you know, subscribe if you aren't, that would really help a lot. Um, and I'm really hoping that this video with all of my blanks and edits and whatever doesn't get suppressed either. So I'd really appreciate that support very, very much. Um, as always, please lead in love in your communities. Um, you know, please have conversations that are based in love and truth. And if you don't get to talk about the thing that you think you are wanting to talk about, try to just talk about real things be a friend share the gospel don't share the gospel yet be a friend be sincere find a common interest in something else i think we all hyper focus way too much on these things that have become so big and so loud they are a distraction from loving one another and you know the scripture says that in the end of days that the love of many will grow cold because of disobedience and i get that but don't let that be you right call out what needs to be called out but then still seek relationships in love as best as you can and pray for these people pray for me pray for everyone in your world everyone in your sphere because we need we need biblical truth we need the leading of god we need um a sincere pursuit of god and that's the only thing that is going to bring us to right standing with the Lord. Um, you know, I strongly suggest that you go and look up stories and examples of people who just came to know the Lord and it changed their lives. You can look at, you know, big examples like Cody Campbell, um, or you can look at little no name examples like me. <laughs> I was not walking with the Lord and I came to a place where I came to understand truths about God's word and how I had to come to this place of asking myself if I was really going to align with it and live by it or if I was going to accept the consequences of not living by it. And it's as simple as that, folks. So keep it simple and remember that God loves you and I do too. If you enjoyed this content today, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Um, and I've loved talking with you. I would love it so much if you could subscribe like I asked. That'd be so great and helpful. Um, also, if you could check out some of these other videos, that would be really helpful too. Um, I made a playlist of content that is definitely not being suppressed. And I hope that it blesses, encourages, and, you know, just equips you. So... God loves you and I do too.